welcome to Local Edition on Time Warner Cable. I'm Steve Swatt with the Sacramento Report. In the next few minutes, we're going to talk about the prospects of oil trains passing through California communities and whether emergency responders are prepared in case there's an accident. My guest this segment is Freddie Rodriguez, a member of the State Assembly from Pomona. Thanks for being with us. Thank you, Steve. So you've got uh, three decades in the books as an emergency responder, so I know where you're coming from. I mean, you want to make sure they are adequately trained. Uh, this is a potentially a, a really serious and a big problem in California, isn't it? Yes, Steve. Well, as you know, the past couple of years, uh, we've been seeing an increase of oil by rail. You know, last year alone, there was over uh, 155 oil spills. This year, in, t in 2014, there's been 90. And the type of oil we're getting from North Dakota, Balkan crude, is very high, highly volatile. Mm -hmm. um, as you know, there's proposals. Um, Valero has a proposal to um, ship, uh, I guess, uh, 100 tanker cars through Sacramento and Davis on its way to Benicia in the Bay Area. There are proposals for uh, you know, trains to go over the Tehachapi's into greater Los Angeles. And uh, I, I guess the question is, do you think that our responders are prepared in case there is an accident? No, uh, I don't think they're properly equipped. They may be to a degree, but I think it's important that now that we're seeing that more of that type of oil being brought by rail, um, one of the first responders here, not recently, referred to a, a fire as a result of a, a, a oil spill as a river of napalm because the type of crude oil being brought in. So what I want to uh, educate folks and bring awareness to is funding for our local agencies in the inland communities mm -hmm. where that uh, oil is coming from because some of these oil transports are bringing over two million gallons of crude oil through very highly populated cities uh, next to schools hospitals and so forth i just want to make sure that they really like i said properly equipped and trained uh, when those when, if they occur because right now like i said I think they're limited in what they can do, and it's very important that those first responders in those communities and some of those rural areas as well, they're, they're volunteer fire departments, that they have the proper equipment necessary for if that does occur. It would also be a help, I would think, if the uh, railroads were a little more forthcoming as to what they are doing and when they are doing it, because they are withholding a lot of information now from the general public and from uh, Office of Emergency Services, for example, as to what their schedules are and things like that. Yeah, and, and along those lines as well, the type of rail cars that are being brought in, they're, refer, uh, they're uh, dot 111, and some of the critics refer to them as a, a Pepsi can on wheels because of the type of freight they're coming in, the, the rail cars, right? That There's a lot that can be done, not only the routes that are coming through, maybe through less populated areas, but the type of uh, rail cars that are being brought in with the oil as well, because Canada had those types, but they're the phasing them out. That's another thing that we need to do as well here in the United States. Now, when you're dealing with rail coming from North Dakota into California, you're dealing with interstate commerce, and that's a federal issue. Is there something California can do? Yeah, well, basically, but a lot of it is preempted by state, or mm -hmm. I should say by federal law and the Constitution, and that is why we need to work with the rail industry, which they are doing good, but I think we need to do more mm -hmm. as far as when it comes to transporting oil by rail. And one thing, like I said, is getting rid of those types of old... Uh, rail cars and getting with the newer brands and also looking at the safer routes and maybe the braking on these rail cars as well. So there's a lot of different things we can do. But you, you said earlier regarding um, notifying the local uh, EMS agencies or public right. safety agencies on, hey, you know what, on this Friday we may have X amount of uh, crude by rail coming in. Right. Advise people, let them know ahead of time. Uh, in case a disaster does happen, they're aware of it. All right. Well, Freddie Rodriguez, a member of the State Assembly from Pomona, thanks for coming by and talking about this very topical issue. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time. And thanks to our viewers for watching Local Edition on Time Warner Cable. A reminder, you can see this and other interviews on My Government On Demand, also on YouTube. I'm Steve Swatt. Have a great day.